Welcome into the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Uh, we've we've taken about a month off of doing Buffalo content, and it, it's nothing uh, that was planned. Uh, just there was some more pressing things to report on. But uh, we definitely need to give everybody uh, an update on what's going on with the Buffalo mob trial. It seems like it's the, the machinations of this thing. And it's been going on five years. The first uh, indictment dropped in 2019. And... Um, now this year in 2024, we're, we're finally getting uh, trials related to this Buffalo mob racketeering, or I should say Buffalo mob connected racketeering case that charges uh, the, the alleged Buffalo Mafia Don's nephew, Peter Gerais Jr. and DEA or retired DEA agent Joe Bongiovanni for a series of racketeering offenses that were being run out of Jerase Jr.'s strip club, Pharaoh's Gentleman's Club in Cheek Tuaga, which is a, a suburb of Buffalo, um, used to be owned by his father, Big Pete Jerase, who is allegedly a made member of the mafia. Uh, little Pete, or you know, Pete Jerase Jr., who's on trial right now, is alleged to have uh, bragged to people that he's a made guy. His uncle, who we just referenced, uh, who is the reputed mafia don of Buffalo has never been convicted has always pushed back on the notion that he's a member or a leader of organized crime is a legitimate multimillionaire with the Lenovo pizza and wing franchise. So we, we always want to be very clear about that. Uh, Joe Todaro jr. AKA Joe pizza. And that's a picture of him and his dad his alleged um, predecessor lead pipe, Joe Todaro, Joe Todaro senior who founded Lenovo uh, the pizza wing franchise and both of their names have come up in the trial um and then a, a name of a hollywood actor came up in the trial uh just this week and it had come up in oh well, again i, I might have got ahead of myself i know you guys probably know this but just for anyone that's watching this for the first time jerase jr and bon giovanni were indicted as co-defendants but their cases were split bon giovanni went and uh had his his two trials this past summer and was convicted in the second trial. And uh, now it's Jerry's turn in front of the jury. Um, and in the original Bon Giovanni case, Lillo Brancato, who everybody might not just know that name right off the bat, but that was C from A Bronx Tale, which is an iconic film. And uh, he was the, the lead in that in that uh in that movie directed by robert de niro co-starring robert de niro uh based on chas palmentary's play it's just the, that movie is so good and it get, gets better with time and he's great in it as a 16 year old um and then was in the sopranos uh had a pretty prominent role in the second season of the sopranos a major or i say a central supporting character playing maddie Bell, uh maddie Drinkwater. Uh, Bella Vacqua, who was a young up and comer underneath Chrissy Maltesante. And then he thinks that he can get ahead uh, by killing Chrissy Maltesante and he misses. And then he's on the run. And then, you know, I, this is, this is 20 or oh, 25 years later, spoiler. Uh, and then Tony Soprano finds him and kills him. And then the rest of the show that Maddie Drinkwater murders, like hanging over Tony Soprano's head. Uh, so it looked like things were on the, you know, the trajectory was really forward and upward for, for Lillo Brancato, but in the 2000s, um, fell deep into heroin addiction. And uh, in 2005, he was arrested for heroin possession. And then a couple months later, uh, was involved in a murder where him and a um, co-conspirator broke into a residence in the Bronx um, looking to score drug money. And there was a off-duty police officer and they got into a shootout broncado didn't shoot but his co-conspirator co did uh he was convicted of a second degree murder in in a 2008 trial did five years in prison and now has been out for about 10 years you can see him on some of the you know the, the autograph uh, uh convention circuits where he's uh doing meet and greets but According to the, the testimony at both the Bon Giovanni trial and now at the Jerez trial by uh, FBI and DEA agents, and they're talking about the alleged 
criminal activity happening at Pharaoh's, which they say is just a, um, a den of, of, of depravity, uh, and that the VIP room on the second floor where the owner, Peter Gervais Jr., often takes you know, his, his private party uh, up there. And according to the federal agents, there's a lot of cocaine use, a lot of prostitution. And um, it's been kind of, I don't want to say a who's who of people, but kind of a who's who of, of important people in Buffalo. Uh, it, it came out, uh, we, we knew that the, the Supreme Court judge, John Mikulski, was an unindicted co-conspirator in this case before he allegedly killed himself. Um, I don't know if I believe that, but, uh, you know, uh, murdered himself instead of getting, um, indicted in this case. And, uh, it looks like he was one of the people that was up in, in the VIP room. Well, according to these FBI agents and D agents, so was Lilo Brancato. Um, and I think there were a lot of, you know, athletes and actors and musicians that would come through Buffalo that would make their way to Pharaoh's kind of in a similar way to, uh, you know, less sex industry, but back in the seventies with Mulligans, which was their kind of like studio 54, uh, all of the, the famous celebrities and mobsters would cohabitate together at, at, at Mulligans. And I think it's somewhat like that at Pharaoh's, but, a little bit more sleazy. Um, so that was interesting. And then I just want to give a couple other notes on what we've uh, heard from testimony over these last couple of weeks. The trial's been going on about a month, probably will last another month, and we'll probably have a verdict before Christmas, I'm guessing. But uh, we found out a, a, a couple of interesting things. First, that uh, an F, or, I apologize, an FBI agent. Um, testified that uh, he was the one that came across Peter Gerace Jr.'s name and, and began to investigate him all the way back in the 2000s when he was assigned to a, a cold case mob murder squad where they were investigating, you know, <laughs> they were investigating Todaro murders, um, murders that had been either ordered or I would guess mostly ordered by lead pipe Joe Todaro, who was the alleged godfather in, in uh, Western New York from the early 80s all the way to when he died in 2012 of natural causes, almost 90 years old. Um, you know, neither him nor his son have ever been convicted of any federal crime, let alone murders, but they, they've been suspects. Um, and this FBI agent testified that his approach to the cold case murder investigation was not to start at the top, but to start with younger people, younger family members of suspects. Um, so, you know, kind of start to trim around the edges and then try to work your way up. And this, this, uh, FBI agent came across Peter Gerace Jr.'s name and what was going on at uh, uh, at Farrell Strip Club. So we started investigating. This was back in 2008, 2009. And immediately he is met with interference from Bon Giovanni with the DEA. So the FBI agent who, who knew Bon Giovanni, you know, professionally, but didn't know him very well. And, uh, couple months into the investigation, maybe almost a year into the investigation, the FBI raids Farrell Strip Club on Halloween 2009. They thought if they raided Halloween night, there was going to be a party there. And if there's a party there, there's going to be a lot of drugs there. So they raided uh, the strip club on Halloween 2009, um, explained it to Gerace Jr. that he was a, a target or a suspect in, in a uh, racketeering investigation. And then within like a couple days, maybe a week, Bon Giovanni calls the head FBI agent that did the raid and says, hey, you know, I know Peter. I know Peter. Peter's my good friend. We go way back. He's a good guy. And if not outwardly saying Peter was his informant, 
implying that Peter was his informant. And there was a meeting at the uh, electric tower uh, where the a lot of the federal offices are. And they met at the mezzanine uh, over coffee with the FBI agent, Bon Giovanni and Gerace Jr. And the FBI agent saying like, what's the purpose of this meeting? Like nobody's telling me anything. It was like all this stuff that was being said, but wasn't being said. And uh, he got the feeling that he was being told to back off and then he backed off. Um, and bon, Gio or bon Giovanni was able to protect Gerace Jr. for at least another seven years after that. So that was interesting. And then uh, I also was able to talk to some of the feds that were working that cold case murder probe back in the 80s that Gerace Jr.'s name came up on. And uh, I'm told that the, the two murders, and, and again, that, that cold case probe never you know, materialized into any charges. Um, but I'm told that the, the two cases, the two homicides that the FBI thought they could possibly get the Tadaros on or one or both of the Tadaros on. Um, it starts back in 1965 with Charlie Gerace, or char sorry, uh, Charlie, um, it sounds like Gerace, but uh, Geras, Charlie Geras, um was a real estate agent that was allegedly sleeping with lead pipe Joe's girlfriend and uh, went to a meeting to go meet lead pipe Joe and never came home alive. They found him in the trunk of his car, uh, badly tortured and murdered. And I want to be very um, deliberate in my words here. Uh, Joe Todaro Jr., Joe Pizza, the one that's still alive, the one that the FBI claims is the, the Don now, was seen with his dad in the hours surrounding that homicide, was driving his dad around. This was back when when uh, Joe Pizza was only 20, maybe, uh, 21, uh, 22. And um, he was seen with Lead Pipe Joe on the day that uh, Jaras was was uh, kidnapped and murdered. Uh, and then we go forward uh, about 20 years, not about 20 years, 20 years to 1985. And there was the murder of a mob soldier named Joey Sanfratello. And the belief from the FBI was that Todaro Jr. had ordered it. Uh, Sanfratello was killed coming out of a, a bar. He had upset a lot of people with uh, ripping them off in drug deals. He had put his hand on the uh, the daughter of uh, a, a popular mob soldier uh, named Sammy, the arm uh, Cardinale, and he was allegedly doing a lot of drug ripoffs, uh, pretending that everything was on the up and up, and then either giving people bad product and taking the money or just hijacking the product. And I, I'm told that one of the, the hijackings was belonged to somebody that reported to the Todaros or the Todaros had a piece of tribute from said alleged activity. Again, never convicted of any federal crimes, definitely never convicted of any murders, but they were implicated in investigations. So that all came out in the last couple of weeks. Just wanted to share with you guys. I'll uh, give you guys another update probably, you know, after the holiday, first week of December, uh, I'm in touch with uh, all the reporters that are there on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as a lot of FBI, uh, DEA guys, and a lot of street guys. I mean, we can't tell who can't tell you who the street guys are, but I talk to quite a few, and, and they fill me in, and that's why I've been able to get so deep into the subject matter, and frankly, break news that the guys in Buffalo aren't. So, um, I mean, the, the like the Buffalo News and the the local uh, TV stations and stuff. So please. Keep on checking back at Original Gangsters Podcast, at Original Gangsters Members Only Patreon, at our companion web magazine, Gangster Report, about uh, for all the latest breaking news about the Buffalo Mafia, this trial. We really we get into the nitty gritty details um, that nobody else gives you. And then obviously we're uncovering the underworld 24-7, uh, one city, one region, one country at a time. Please like, share, and subscribe. Everybody have a 
happy Thanksgiving, and uh, I'll see you guys after the holiday. I'm Scott Bernstein. I'm out.